How's it going everybody? Welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to give you an updated reevaluation, if you will, on the Apple iPad Mini and the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. We initially did our review when both of these devices first hit the market. Some time has passed and a lot of people on YouTube have asked us to reapproach this review and take a look at a lot of the new features that went into most particularly the Nook HD tablet. As you can see we have the web browser open here. You can see that the mini screen is a little bit bigger. It's 7.9 inches versus 7 inches. You have a little bit more viewing space, although you notice that the main UI elements here are a lot smaller. You can read what's in the web browser here, but you can necessarily read as clear or as crisp on the iPad mini. This is mainly due to the resolution. The Nook tablet has 1440 by 900 for the pixels, while the Apple iPad only has 1024 by 768. This is running Chrome, which is the default web browser now that the Nook HD runs, and this is default Safari. Let's take a look first at what's changed on the Nook HD. As you can see on the main carousel here, Google Play is front and center. This will give you hundred thousands of apps. It's very easy to find and engage in app discovery, whether you're looking for games, apps, productivity, e-reading apps, and so on. So let's just click on an app and give you a, an idea about how it looks. So let's check out Despicable Me. Get a sense of how the app performs, screenshot library, apps and ratings, similar apps. Although I don't know what Despicable Me and Spider-Man have in common, but... Just other apps that you may like, I guess. Right. Now on Google Play, there are links to other app stores, including our own Goody Reader App Store. But you can download and install apps from Google Play or even the Nook App Store. But if you download an app store from Google Play, like our app store, One Mobile, and things like that, you can't actually download and install apps from alternative app stores. So you can't sideload apps unless you root your device and whatnot. We don't really encourage all that. So what's really changed? Well, Barnes & Noble's removed their own default web browser and put Chrome. But you could also see a number of bundled Google apps that have been included. Gmail, Google Search, Google Plus, uh, are the actual Google settings where you'd put in your Gmail account and address and things like that. Google Maps, pretty well any core Google service you can think of, including books, Google TV, and Google Magazines. So this gives you a very strong collection of apps. Before this update really hit, you were strictly reliant on Barnes & Noble's own ecosystem. So they had sort of the walled garden approach that Apple employs on their iTunes store where they, they approve or disapprove apps. So on the Barnes & Noble app store, you won't find Kindle or Kobo or Comixology or really any e-reading service that competes with Barnes & Noble. But now that you have Google Play, you now have the ability to run Kindle on your Nook HD, run Kobo, run Sony eBooks. If you want to install Marvel Comics, feel free. You can install any app or game that you want, which basically makes this really relevant. And Barnes & Noble has put the Nook HD on sale. I believe that you can get this one for about $129 now. That really changes things because when we first, did, when we first got this device, it was nothing but a headache for us in Canada. You couldn't get apps, you could purchase movies, you couldn't watch the movie, you can't get games, you can't get anything. And then we tried, hey, let's just sideload stuff. Between um, the Nook tablet and the Nook HD, they've gotten rid of the menu that allows you to unlock the device to allow installation from unknown sources. You can't get that menu on here anymore because it's pre-locked for you. So you can't even sideload anything. So we had to use workarounds and VPNs and all that kind of stuff. But now that this is all available with Google Play and all the bundled Google apps, it really becomes almost an entirely new tablet in its own. And 
in conjunction with a tremendously large price drop. It's gone from its launch price at almost $200 all the way down to just over 120 Yeah, and I mean, not to mention that it's very internationally relevant now. Any country in the world has access to Google Play, whereas if you buy this tablet and you live in South Africa, or you live in Australia, or if you live in Brazil, you can actually use this app and download apps in your own native local languages. It still comes with the Barnes & Noble App Store as well as the Barnes & Noble eBook Store. But unless you live in the USA or the UK, you can't actually download or install anything or even actually make a purchase. But you can do business with Google Books or you can buy books through Amazon if your local market supports it. So what's impressed me about the Nook HD is how viable it is now as a low-cost tablet with high resolution, pretty good specs, and most importantly, people from outside the U.S., such as ourselves living in Canada, can actually buy this and use it to its maximum efficiency. The Apple iPad Mini was always really designed to work in, in foreign and international markets. So it caught on a lot faster and was more widely adopted than the Nook HD was. It was, of course, a huge price you know, distinction. This is like, what, around $500 or so plus? And this is like $129. So this is the Apple ecosystem. I mean, there's things that we could say about it, but you've heard them all before. And in our initial comparison, we really you know, played video, we played audio, we really battled these guys head to head and showed you the multimedia uh, capabilities of it. Uh, suffice to say, this is the main app store. So this is where you would find apps, both free and paid magazines, newspapers. This is actually a very solid port that just came over. Knights of the Old mm, Republic. Yes, yes. Very popular old, older school Star Wars game. It almost seems like these older school games are enjoying a resurgence. They were kind of low polygon, uh, low resolution. They were perfect on like a few generations of consoles ago, but they're like the perfect game for the mobile space just because of that. You know, not huge frame rates. Um, the animations aren't going to kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> old school SNES style uh, graphics. <laughs> I love those sixteen bit games. Yeah, man. Okay, so of course. You've seen this all before. So what really makes these different now? Well, it's the difference between Android and iOS. You can't sideload content, of course, on here, and you can't do it on there. We actually wrote a very interesting post about how from the day that Barnes & Noble prevented sideloading on the Nook tablet, Barnes & Noble effectively eliminated piracy. Right. Android for it has a lot of virtues, but it's the most heavily pirated operating system in the world, next to, to Windows games. Barnes Noble, when they eliminated sideloading, you actually have to get apps from either Barnes Noble's App Store or Google Play. And so they eliminated piracy. Now with Apple, it's the same thing. You, it's very hard to impossible to sideload apps. Of course, you can root them both, but it takes a special sort of user to be able to do that. So very simplified UI. A lot of first party, you know, developer support, Star Wars Pinball, a lot of games like that. So this is the main UI. Tell us about tell us about the Nook HD. We have our little carousel here, which is uh, very similar to that of Amazon's, except it doesn't take up the whole screen. We still have kind of the standard five or six page Android um, uh, front screens here, so you can long press, move things around. Uh, you have your apps, which is just your app list of everything you have either preloaded or downloaded onto here. So we showed you lots of new Google stuff, so that's definitely new. Uh, you have uh, hotkeys at the bottom that don't really change unless you customize them too, because you can actually set up multiple profiles on this uh, device. You can set up things like if you have a daughter or a son and see now the web is gone so you prevent them from browsing the web and all that kind of thing so uh, there's certain things you can do with that but um, uh, from our old review uh, it hasn't really changed too much in this regard it is mostly the addition of the Google products being bundled onto this device because that really changes 
pretty much everything. I mean, we've always liked this device from the day it got launched. We were like, wow, look at those specs. Look at this great build quality. You know, it's Barnes & Noble. This is what we waited for, and we couldn't use it almost at all. So this really opens it up for everybody now. Yeah, I would say on the whole... The Barnes & Noble Nook HD is very family friendly. Being able to establish profiles, lock out app purchases, being able to only allow them to access certain things at certain times, and it has a bright and vibrant ecosystem now. What can we say about the Apple iPad Mini that hasn't been said before? I mean, it has the most first party support. It is very expensive, but if you you know, have the money to buy this, you have the money to buy all the apps and buy in-game currency and all that type of stuff. So it comes a matter of like personal preference. I would say right now, currently, end of June 2013, the Nook HD is probably the better buy. You know, it's a little over a hundred dollars. You're gonna get a lot of value here, and it's probably for that price, probably the best Google Android tablet with Google Play that you can actually buy on the market. I would say so. It's a good. It's a standard screen size, seven inch. It's got dual uh, stereo speakers on the back. Uh, it doesn't have a camera, but it does have a tremendously large resolution that actually cripples even that of the iPad Minis. It's a very good deal overall. I totally agree. So. This has been an updated review of uh, the Barnes & Noble Nook HD versus the Apple iPad Mini. If you have any uh, questions or concerns, if you uh, have any ideas for future videos, kindly drop us a line and we'll uh, let you know. You can watch all of our other videos at youtube.com slash goodyreader. And for all the latest n news, previews, interviews, and industry-wide coverage, you can check out our website at goodyreader.com. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.